Okay, in this scenario, I have a uh, SharePoint document library called Incoming Resumes, where uh, people can submit their resume, and as you see, I have a test document already in there. And I want to grab the email address from SharePoint, and then uh, via a Visual Studio-based uh, workflow inside of SharePoint, I want to send an automated email response back. So I'm going to extract this email address, and using workflow, I'm going to send an email back to the, uh, the person who sent the uh, email. So let's go ahead and start by uh, minimizing the uh, portal. Actually, let's pull up uh, Visual Studio here. I'm going to start a new project. And I'm going to choose a SharePoint project from the Office 2007 direct uh, list of project types. This is Visual Studio 2008, but you could also use Visual Studio 2005. I'm going to call this uh, project extract email and send response. Visual Studio 2008 will actually bring up a wizard uh, that will help me with the deployment. It's a little different in Visual Studio 2005, but, um, but this is Visual Studio 2008. It brings up a deployment wizard here. First thing it wants to know is where do I want my uh, work my uh, workflow to be deployed to. So I'm going to choose my uh, my site here. So I'm going to take the uh, URL of uh, of my um, team site, which is that, and I'm going to pop that into the wizard. Hit the next button. And here it wants to know what list I want to actually attach my workflow to. So I'm going to go ahead and choose that incoming resumes um, list. Hit the next button and then it asks me how do I want my uh, workflow to be started. And in this case, since I'm doing development and I don't have to keep uploading emails to test it, I'm going to enable the manually by user. I will also leave the uh, uh, when item is created essentially to allow it to automatically uh, start the workflow. Okay, so now we have our Visual Studio project, and you can see here on the left side there are some properties that um, have been filled in by that, that wizard that we just filled out. Uh, so the first thing I'm going to do in my workflow is I'm just going to rough out what the workflow is going to do, and then I'll add the code afterwards. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to log my workflow as started, so in case I have any uh, errors or anything like that, at least I know at what point the uh, workflow left off. So I'm going to go ahead and put in uh, drop the log uh, activity there. The history description is going to be workflow started. Let's go ahead and give it a, a name here, logging workflow started. The next thing I want to do is um, I'm going to go ahead and use a code activity to uh, extract the uh, email address or get the email address. So I'm going to call this uh, code activity get email address. Then after that, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use another code activity to create the email message. Let's call this one create email message. And then the uh, next uh, activity I'm going to use is the send email activity from the SharePoint workflow and as you can see it's got a lot of values that I can uh, set here about the email, the BCC, the body of the email, the CC, etc. Um, some additional ones down here, the two and the subject as well. So I'm going to call this one send automated email and then the last one I'm going to do is another log to let me know that the workflow is completed. So let's go ahead and pop that one in there. We'll call that one log workflow completed. And then I will put down the description is workflow as completed. Okay, so that's our roughed out workflow. Okay, so let's go ahead and add the uh, code for getting the email address. Double click there. I'm going to add a uh, class level variable to hold my email address that I'll need that later. We'll 
we'll call it uh, applicant email address. And then my get email property here. Let me close this. I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste the code in that, that gets the email address just so that you uh, can see what it looks like. I'm going to do a little word wrapping here and go over it. Um, I'm grabbing the email address from SharePoint, which, which is actually HTML encoded. It's in a it's in an uh, anchor reference. It's not just a pure email address. And I'm going to get that from the email sender field of my uh, of my team site. So I'm grabbing it from this address. And as you can see down here in the bottom left hand corner, as I highlight this, you'll see that it actually is a mail to tag in uh, HTML, not not a standard text email address. So the next thing I'm going to do once I get that email address is using regular expressions, I'm going to go ahead and extract the uh, HTML from the email address, saving the pure email address in the uh, applicant email address field. And I will post the, uh, the code for this as well so that you don't have to remember each line of the code. Okay, so now that we've done that, Okay, let's go ahead and now add our uh, code for the uh, create email message. Let's double click. Go full screen here. And I'm going to paste in the uh, code for this activity. But as you can see, it's pretty simple. I set the, uh, the send automated email as the activity that I added earlier for my e uh, email and I'm setting the to, the from, the subject, and the body. And as you can see, the body uh, of the email respects uh, HTML tags as well, so you can put bold on a line, uh, hyperlink text, and that sort of thing. And so, oops, I now see that I forgot to add the using statement for the regex, so let me go ahead and add that now. Okay, now that that's done, let's go back to our workflow. The last thing we have to do is uh, clear up this one uh, message here uh, for the send automated email. It's asking for a correlation token. So let's go to the properties of that tag and uh, set the correlation token. So I'm going to set the correlation token for this to the workflow token. And the workflow token was set originally when the workflow was started. Visual Studio gave me a workflow token. And I won't get into what tokens mean in this particular talk, but uh, uh, it is a uh, requirement for uh, activities that actually send and receive information to have workflow tokens. Okay, so now let's go ahead and deploy this. And now that it's deployed, we can go ahead and pull down the workflow task here because we allowed this workflow to be manually started. We'll be sending an email to that user. Here's our workflow. I'm going to go ahead and start it. There the workflow is starting. Okay, now that that's completed, let's go and check the, uh, the log here. So I click on the completed button. And you see our two workflow log entries are right there, which is great. I check the uh, Outlook of the user who submitted the email. Hit send receive. And there you see we have an email with our automated email response. With the message here as well. Alright, so let's go ahead and deploy this. And now that it's deployed, we can go ahead and uh, pull down the menu, hit the workflow tab since we allow for manual workflow starting launch our workflow. Now that our workflow is completed, you see we have an email down here. If I click on the completed tab, you will see that our logging worked exactly the way we expected. If I open Outlook, you will see Come our back to this blog email. URL and you will find more videos this like this as well as the sample code and other resources. Thank you.